So as far as managing that risk, what I'd like to think about is this. If you ever feel like you're losing your balance, I'd like you to communicate with your group, and I'd also like you to think about, you know, if you're losing balance and you're in a position that hurts, just let go, because I don't want you to get hurt. Okay, that's not the goal. Our program goal today is not about injuring you. Okay, so that's kind of just managing the risk. So is everybody okay still to participate in this? Okay, cool. I beg you to raise your right hand. I beg you to reach across that circle and grab somebody else's right hand across the circle. <laughs> <laughs> Has everybody got a hand? Wait. <laughs> You've all got two hands. It's all right. It's all right. No, no, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Because right. if one person's left out, it's fine. Just, right, just connect with one person, not with two people. If one person's left out, that's fine. Because even if we've got an odd number, these people still will have two hands. So in a moment, it'll work out. Okay. Raise your left hand. And then grab somebody else. So if somebody was left out at the beginning, you just grab two people at that stage. All right. <laughs> Is everybody okay? Because we haven't even started yet. Is yep. everybody okay? Okay. So the challenge is that you have to get out of this knot that you've created in the middle. Okay? That's your challenge. That's your objective. The guidelines are this. You have to do it in such a way that you don't lose contact with the two people who you are connected with right now. So thinking about the kind of managing of the risk, I'd like you to just spend maybe a moment, and then I'm going to say time out in a moment. What I'm going to do this to its fruition. Okay, so whenever you're ready, go for it. Go, go, go. Here we go first. You go, okay, in and out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I definitely go through this hole because I'm attached to the two. I think, okay, so. I think Josie could step over. I'm serious. No, the way Josie's connected, if he goes down and under the floor, he Okay, so if we back up, back up, now I've got a question for you. Based off what we've already gone through in this class, why is my argument valid that the human knot is not an icebreaker? What are some of the reasons why my argument would be valid? Because we definitely just use everybody's name, and if it's an icebreaker, I don't know people's names. Yeah, so imagine if you were a group that first came together, right? That's not knowing each other. So there's a good argument. Well, that was my argument. Okay. What are some others? You need to trust each other for the fact that they're not the icebreaker one. Yeah. I mean, oh, wait. You know, we heard it kind of. They were in a knot. So there's a higher level of trust. In fact, depending on how it goes, sometimes there's an extreme level of trust there. Okay. What are some other arguments, reasons for my argument that a human knot is not an icebreaker? You got to be yeah. comfortable like, touching each other. Exactly, yeah. I mean, the activity immediately throws you into physically touching others. If you just met a group, would you want to throw somebody who's, who's, who's maybe not as comfortable touching others straight into that situation? What might be the consequences of doing that? Somebody's not comfortable touching others and suddenly it's, you know, Activity number two in your session, part of your ice breaking sequence, and suddenly they have to touch each other in close quarters. What might happen? Like back off from being involved for like yeah. the rest of the activity. Yeah, they might, they might disengage. They might disengage. So, you have to furrow a brow. I didn't mean to, but yeah. But, but, that's, but that's good. That's a good because it does get used a lot as an icebreaker. Every time I've done it, it was always an icebreaker. An icebreaker. Okay? So, do you understand my argument? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Now, it doesn't mean that we might not do a few quick ice breaks and say, okay, guys, I got, you're doing great. I'm now going to throw a higher level of, this is actually a challenge. Was there some problem solving involved with that, too? So do you think there could be some kind of debriefing after that as far as building a team? Do we need to debrief icebreakers? No. It's just all about the initial collection. So when we think about sequencing, that's where these activities, and here's the thing with the human knot, is in a bunch of publications, <coughs> it's listed as an icebreaker. 
So I'm not faulting anybody for using it as an icebreaker because it's actually listed. There's a one. There's one book that's called you know icebreakers for everybody or something like that, and it's listed in that book. But when we're thinking about true kind of facilitation techniques, when we're thinking about sequencing and how important that is to our possible program success, we need to think about all of those factors. Where does an icebreaker fit? Where does an energizer fit? If it's got any sort of problem solving component, it's not an icebreaker by definition. Any sort of problem solving component, it's not a definition. Now, you know, we go back over here as far as you know, the, you know, there was physical connection there, right? Handshakes. In some cultures, that's not appropriate for a male and a female to handshake immediately like that. So depending on our audience, we might need to think about that as far as our choice of activity. And this is where it all kind of plays in. So just some thoughts, possibly wisdom, but just some thoughts. Let's take a 10-minute break, and then after the break,